baby cookie. Hello. Here, there's our baby cookie. It's a, a crazy man. She took me shopping today yes, yes, and yes. bought me a nice, great, big, juicy yes. glazed donut. Yes, yes. So I'm going to have this nice, Ooh. nice, <laughs> gooey glazed donut. See? Big donut. And then a glass of milk. And then coffee. And my Farrah Fawcett glass. Oh, look at that. Oh, legs, legs, legs. Oh, legs, legs. <laughs> legs, legs, legs. Legs, legs, legs. Ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh. ow. Ding dong. <laughs> Ding dong. Ding dong. Very yes. Nice. Oh, now, okay, now. I'm going to the kitchen, okay? And. The, you, you have to look at the camera lens. Don't look at the viewer. Look at the lens. Come back and look at the black, black, black the round black oh, part. This one, this one, the, this the one. camera lens. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. All right, Cookie. Yes. Go, go yes. in the kitchen. Go fetch my paper and my slippers, and then go in the kitchen and mop the floor, <laughs> and then get dinner started and wash my clothes, and stop complaining. I don't love you. Friend, You're not in the camera lens. Hey, my friend, this, this, this man. Toot toot. <laughs> well, hi everybody, bus old man Phil here. It's Friday, October 27th or 29th or 32th or 43th. I don't know. I just can never get the whole thing right. Anyway, it's a gorgeous day here in Columbia Heights, Minnesota. It's about 2.30 p.m. And uh, I'll tell you a bus story, but first I'm gonna have my donut and milk and coffee, and then I'll set up here and tell you a bus story. But I feel good today. I went to a different doctor today, and he gave me a shot in my knees of something different. And right now my knees don't hurt and I feel good. I'm in a good mood. So I'm going to tell a transit story today. One about when I was in St. Louis Park and it's a cold, chilly fall night. And I'm on the 14 line, the St. Louis Park Robbinsdale. And again, it's a PM rush hour story. And then a second story I haven't figured out yet. So. That's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to have my coffee, or my donut and milk and coffee and enjoy this gorgeous Friday afternoon here in Columbia Heights, Minnesota. So I'll be back. Okay, so anyway, the Gopher Stadium is here. This is Washington Avenue Southeast and this is University Avenue Southeast. University is a main street from far up northeast Minneapolis up till it merges with Minnesota Highway 47 in Blaine, Minnesota. And uh, it runs all the way through into downtown St. Paul. So here we go. So I said Saturday, October 5th. Now Friday when I finished work and looked at the markup board, I was on the extra board, by the way. Uh, you had to have gray hair, long whiskers to pick a run on this Minneapolis St. Paul line. People liked it. And by the time you had enough seniority to pick a run on the 16 line, you also had enough seniority that you didn't have to pick a run that worked weekends. So you got out of this Saturday calamity uh, in the fall of every year when the home games of the golfers are being played. All right, so anyway, so I marked up for run three, Minneapolis-St. Paul. That's how they did it. Uh, the numbering system was new at that time, and the drivers didn't relate to it. They just didn't get it in their head. So they would, now I see that I've adjusted the camera so my head's out of it. So, well, that's the way it is. Maybe there's a zoom function. Uh, anyway, 
So I knew what I'd be in for working that line that day. So what I did was got through with my work that day. Uh, I told my drinking buddies, I'm going right home. I'm going right home. I'm going to have dinner and, and go to bed. I got to get up early in time to have a big breakfast because this line is going to kill me if I don't come to work prepared. A big breakfast and a long time in the bathroom before I leave for work and once more before I get because the bad part about this line was the only place you could use the restroom was the library cafe which was on the corner of 11th Street and Hennepin. So I would once more go there before I pull. The time to leave 11th and Hennepin on your first trip was 7.35 a.m. You pulled out at 7.15 a.m. That should say a.m., not p.m. And you left at 7.35 a.m. You're going north on Hennepin Avenue. You cross the Mississippi River at Washington. Now, the early birds and the employees at, at Gopher Stadium started leaving for work early. So, plus there are University of Minnesota employees uh, that are up and out that early. So I'm picking up passengers all along Hennepin Avenue in downtown Minneapolis and I'm picking up more passengers on Washington. By the time I get to the Mississippi River on Washington Avenue Southeast, I have a standing load. So, when I get to the U of M campus, I'm getting rid of that standing load. I'm about maybe four or five minutes late. And the reason for being late here is the running time on this line is set for non-Saturday gopher activities. So uh, there are most of, probably 47 weeks of the year, this line just has normal ordinary loads, normal ordinary uh, running time. So yeah, you just suffer with a short running time. So by the time I'm leaving here, now I can see through the back window of the bus. What's happening now is beginning about 14th Avenue Southeast on the east end of the university campus. I am now starting pick up, to pick up passengers who are now headed for downtown St. Paul for the work day on Saturday. By the time I get to Emerald Avenue, which is the city limits, I am now nine minutes behind schedule. So I'm going to hope that if I go from the brake pedal to the gas pedal, pedal to the metal, I will at least be able not to lose any more time. So now I'm moving along. Emerald, by the way, is the Minneapolis-St. Paul city limits. Uh, this can also be a point where they'll drop in service. Or if there's a bus that's not running right, they'll bring a bus from Snelling Station over to Emerald to wait for that bus, make a bus relief here, and pull that defective bus into Snelling Station for repairs. Well, I'm sorry to pick up a load. By the time I get to Rice Street, I am now 11 minutes behind schedule, and I have a standing crammed load into downtown St. Paul. There is no layover time in St. Paul. It's a loop around downtown St. Paul. Come out Broadway. The time I am to leave Broadway on this first trip is 8.50 a.m. By the time I get to Broadway and 5th, which is where I turn and come back through downtown St. Paul into downtown Minneapolis, by the time I get, I'm leaving at 9.04 a.m. I am now leaving downtown St. Paul 14 minutes late. Now, I know what's coming to me. 
the same thing that hit me in downtown Minneapolis is going to hit me in downtown St. Paul. I'm going to load up with people going to the U of M. So every stop there will be passengers. By now there is a supervisor on the street in downtown St. Paul and he's saying I'm going to try to get somebody at Snelling in front of you. Well, what he knows, and I know, that all of the 5105s are either assigned to heavy duty lines like this, or they're sold as charter buses. So all of the lines that don't require the capacity of a 51 passenger bus are assigned the C-41 MAX. Yeah, now we have a, a tracked bobcat running down the street. So there's some background noise. So all of the Macs are out on lines that don't require big buses. And all of the big buses that aren't on lines requiring big buses have been sold off at charter, as charters. So the story is there are no extra buses to fill in at Emerald or any other place in the Twin City. If you rolled a bowling ball diagonally through all three garages in the Twin Cities, you wouldn't hit a bus wheel. So, we gotta have to make do with all we can. So, I get over to the U of M campus, and by now, I'm 20 minutes behind schedule. There are no buses anywhere near me because the bus in front of me is just as late as I am, but he's 10 minutes ahead of me. The headway is 10 minutes on this line, by the way. If there are extra buses left over out of all the charters, then on other home game Saturdays, they can run fill-ins and it's not so critical. But our passengers know this, and they have to cram into the buses whether they like it or not, and they know that. Sometimes once you get to the point of snelling, uh, there's always room in the back of the bus. So you pull up and, and you do this, signaling the passengers, get on the back door, there's room in back. You can come up front and pay your fare when you get off, or pay it next time. Or, there's no big deal. There's, there's plenty of trust, so anyway. So what we have here is a situation, now I'm coming into downtown Minneapolis and I'm dropping off passengers for the stadium and I'm picking up passengers that are going to downtown Minneapolis for their work day. By the time I get back to 11th Street at downtown Minneapolis, I'm 30 minutes late. I turn around, come back out, run into the library hotel, take a pee, run back out, get back out on the Hennepin Avenue. By the way, we don't have to mess around changing signs because the sign is set 16 Minneapolis St. Paul and that stays the same all day long. Okay, now I'm coming back. Now there's a street supervisor here on Hennepin and Washington and he has my bus number, my run number, and he's saying, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Just do what you can. Just keep going, do what you can. Just keep running. So that's what I do. Now, the loads are the same standing from downtown Minneapolis, standing from Rice, standing from Emerald, and standing back into downtown Minneapolis all day long. This does not let up. So, comes to be the end of the game, and guess what? Now, not only do I have loads from the Gopher game, which is keeping me behind schedule, at 8 o'clock p.m., the supervisor says, are you the 6 o'clock? And I said, oh no, he asked me, he says, what, what bus are you? Because I'm off his schedule already. Because I was supposed to pull in when I got back downtown to Minneapolis at 6 p.m. It is now 8 p.m. 
and I have a minor load, not a big load, probably 40 people, and I'm headed west to St. Paul again. On my 6 p.m., I was told by a supervisor, can you make one more round? He says, we're getting close, but can you make one more round? I said, yeah, okay. By now, I'm so damn tired, I couldn't get out of the seat of the bus if I had to. I'm completely dry, no more peeing. I'm already well beyond hunger. And so, they get down here, and, oh, you're the sick, and it's 8 p.m. And he thought I said 8. So I said, oh, okay. And then he said, what? And I said, yeah, 6. And I was advised, or I was asked if I'd make another round trip. He said, my God, what a day. Uh, all the buses on that line by now, by 8 or by 6 p.m., are two hours late, two hours running, two hours behind schedule. And back in that day, we had a, a, a spirit, a company spirituality and a union spirituality. Uh, that that we were okay with doing this extra stuff. We knew we had to do it. We knew we had to get people home, and we had an obligation. It's not like today when uh, drivers, oh, hey, this is over my time. I don't want to work any longer than that. <laughs> well, uh, they forget that their job is not to drive a bus eight hours a day. Their job is to carry passengers about the city. Transit systems are the bloodlines, the arteries of the city. The transit systems take care of people who can't or won't drive. And so, 8 o'clock, I'm headed for downtown St. Paul. I get back here at 9.30 p.m. Things are normal now, and I'm running two hours late, but running on time. I'm in a time frame that's two hours behind mine, but I can stay in there. And so the buses are staying separated because everybody is staying in their uh, running time, even though they're behind schedule. So I get back to 11th Street, and uh, my last passengers get off at 11th Street. I run into the library cafe, which is open until 9, and do that, and then head for the garage. I get back to the garage about 10 p.m. And uh, I was one of the first back. Uh, and that was a typical Gopher Saturday afternoon in Minneapolis, Minnesota in 1957. Now the next adventure takes us to Thursday, November 13th, 1957. And I'm marked up for a one-piece sunshine run. Sunshine runs typically run during the day. Uh, I, re I relieve the day run driver. My, my assignment is run eight, St. Louis Park, Robbinsdale. I didn't write the Robbinsdale because this is this is a sign that's at Lewis Park, Texas. And this is at 5.06 p.m. Uh, when I relieve him. So that piece of work carries this bus to St. Louis Park via Hennepin Avenue, Douglas Avenue, Penn, 21st Sheridan, Cedar Lake Road, France, Minnetonka Boulevard, Texas. Okay, so I make the first round. Now here's the thing, it's November and I begin my annual cold season. I have anywhere from four to six colds between November and April every winter. I was a sickly kid and I don't know why. I mean, I drank enough liquor and smoked enough cigarettes to kill anything. But, so, I have a cold that day, and uh, it's getting worse because I took four aspirin before I left for work. 
and didn't think to take any more. And it was before the days of acetaminophen and, and uh, ibuprofen and the third one, which I can't think of right now. Uh, so aspirin was about the only cold relief. Now it's getting late in the day and it's Monday and Monday, or I mean it's Thursday, sorry about that. Monday and Thursday, the department stores downtown and you remember, if you're old enough, when downtown of the cities had the big department stores. We had Dayton's, Donaldson's, Powers, J.C. Penney, and many, many more. So Thursday nights, people are getting ready to come downtown to shop. So uh, at this time of the year, and it was before we had Black Friday, the early birds were doing their Christmas shopping. And they enjoyed coming downtown. It was early enough of the year, it wasn't cold. We probably didn't have any snow yet, or maybe just a scattering snowfall uh, coming up toward Thanksgiving. So uh, it's getting late in the afternoon now. And I'm coming into downtown Minneapolis. I thought I had the time written down. Oh, it's on my notebook, which is in the office. Uh, it's, it's a little after five, I think it was like 5.04 at 6th and Hennepin. And I'm starting to pick up a crowd way out here in Robbinsdale, coming in from Robbinsdale, down West Broadway in Minneapolis. And I'm picking up a crowd of people. And I'm coming into downtown Minneapolis with 45 passengers on a 51 passenger bus. Any other time of the year, like during the summer that, there may be 20, 25 people coming into downtown Minneapolis that time of day. So now I'm loading up passengers who are coming home from work downtown and I'm hauling out of here. Now remember, my cold is getting worse and worse by the minute. Now it's getting cold and dark around November 15th and I got a standing, coughing, sneezing load and I'm coughing and sneezing. I'm driving a 5105 with no power steering. And here's a right turn onto Douglas, which is coming up Lowry Hill. I showed you where the streetcar, the Comaheret and the Brian Johnson line veered off. And this is the bus line. And I'm making a right turn on Douglas in that same area. And then I'm traveling Douglas westbound. And I'm coming up to, uh, uh, this, I forgot what this was here, uh, Oliver. And I gotta make another right turn. Another left turn, rather. Well, the left turns aren't so bad. I go easy, and I do it grandpa style with the steering wheel. And I get around here, and I'm getting really, really achy. My hips ache, my legs ache, I am i can't breathe. And I get to this right turn, and then I'm coming up here, and look at this. This is a hairpin right turn, and I just, I, I barely got through this left turn, and there was a guy standing by the door, and I said, Sir, would you come up and stand next to me and help me steer? And he helped me make this hairpin turn. Uh, I thought I was going to die. I could barely breathe. I couldn't hear anything. The crowd is not noisy, but they're okay. Everything's okay. But it's just dead ass weight on those front wheels with no power steering. So I get around here and I get to this left turn and he helps me make this left turn. We go a block and make another right turn. This is 21st Street and now we're on Sheridan Avenue and I make this left turn and he helps me. We get through here and I'm okay and this curves around to Cedar Lake Avenue and we get here to another sharp left turn and I have him help me and then we get to France Avenue and a right turn and he helped me again. And by now, things are calmed down. I said, thank you very much, sir. And he had to get off at France and Minnetonka. So I go west on Minnesota, on Minnetonka Boulevard. That's Minnetonka Boulevard to Texas, uh, where I pull in to a uh, strip mall parking lot and turn around through the parking lot, drop passengers off, pick passengers up, and head back downtown. 
Now I make one more trip up into Robbinsdale and when I got up here and I called in and I said, I'm too sick. I can't go any farther. I need help. Uh, I can't make another trip south. I have such a terrible cold and rheumatism. I should never have come to work today. But I knew it was a busy day and I knew you needed every driver you could get. And so I poured it on thick to elicit to elicit as much sympathy as I could because the dispatcher is going to have to ask one of these drivers to pull in that did pull in. Can you go back, get your bus and fill in for run eight? He'll meet you at 6th and Hennepin at 7, 12 p.m. And so that's what happened. When I got to 6th and Hennepin, coming down Washington Avenue, he was on Washington Avenue. I pulled out of 6th and Washington before I turned on to Hennepin. And he pulled in behind me. And I said to my passengers, I'm, I'm sick and I have to discontinue my route. The bus that's right behind you, just hop off and jump on that bus and he'll finish the trip for me. And so that's how that happened. When I got home, well, I stopped at the drugstore first and picked up some Anison. Then I stopped at the liquor store and picked up a pint of brandy and some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, tonic mix. I had a brandy and tonic and uh, I stopped at a White Castle and got some hamburgers and french fries and I took that brandy and that tonic and I mixed myself three strong drinks with that with that anison which was a form of aspirin in those days. I don't think anison is on the market now. I don't think I've seen it in years. Uh, I had those three drinks, I ate those hamburgers and french fries and I crawled into bed and I didn't know from anything because I took the next day off sick. Uh, and that was probably the worst, the worst, sickest time I ever drove in my life. I have never been so sick as that I couldn't turn the bus. So that's my transit stories for today. Uh, I went to a different doctor this morning and got some shots in my knees that have given me a lot of pain relief. They're still sick. It's still hard to get up and down. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed these stories. Uh, and I don't know what's coming up next. Uh, we talked about knee replacement surgery and that's out of the question, out of the question. There is no room in any surgeon's schedule and no room in any hospital in the Twin City due to the COVID epidemic. I'm working with the doctor on shots of a cortisone type medicine that is supposed to last about six months, which for me will probably last about six weeks. But uh, it is a medicine unlike cortisone that can be re, re uh, done. So uh, it's a happy note for me, I'm optimistic I'm not having very good luck with different shots of different uh, things, but the doctors are pulling tricks out of their bag, and hopefully uh, we found a trick that's going to hold things off until I can get surgery. So thanks very much. I feel much better, and I'm glad to be back, and God bless you all. I hope I know you enjoy these stories. I know there are a few, uh, 23 of you last time that enjoyed these stories. So. Uh, I appreciate your comments, I really do. I read them all, I don't answer them all. It's not because I'm not grateful or because I skip over them. It's just, uh, it, uh, it just, I don't know if there's a lot of validity in me saying thank you to everybody who has a good comment. So believe me, take the spirit of my gratitude for you, uh, even if 
I don't comment on your comment. If you have a question to ask or a story to tell about your own transit experience, please share it with us because the other people that read, watch my videos, read your comments. So thanks again. And right if you get work, hang by your thumbs. And I'll see you here and there. And we'll talk about this and that now and then. Bye.